According to a recent study by the World Health Organization, about half the world's population still lacks access to basic healthcare services. That's over 3.7 billion people. For some, it's because they live in a rural area out of reach of healthcare facilities. And for others, it's simply because they can't afford it. But the internet is fast connecting every human on Earth. And since we've now seen how we can use it to offer people in the most remote regions of the world social networking services, we have to ask ourselves, can we do the same for healthcare services? Can we use technology to save lives at the same scale as, say, Facebook or Google? To find out, I gathered a video production team together and we took a trip to Tanzania to meet the brave entrepreneurs that are actually creating these software-based healthcare services. Hello world, it's Siraj. Uh, we are here in Tanzania. We are here to find some interesting people that are using AI technology to make some really incredible solutions for people. Everything from cancer detection to uh, helping young girls with uh, educating them on sexual health to all sorts of uh, technologies that are used to prevent poachers from being successful like drones in the air that can detect humans. The first person on the list to meet was Ali Salim, an entrepreneur in the Kilimanjaro region working on a cancer detection app called Dr. Elsa. The goal of Dr. Elsa is to utilize machine learning technology to empower doctors and institutions to provide smarter, better healthcare for patients in East Africa. I sat down with him at his office to have a conversation about his history and his work. How's it going, Ali? I feel good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is that, how you, how you is that how you say Ali? Yes, it Ali. is. Okay, it cool. is, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, tell me a bit about yourself. Like, um, you, did you grow up in Tanzania? Ah, yeah, absolutely. So, I uh, born and raised here. I uh, went to university in Florida. Oh, okay. Then moved to Texas. Then moved to California. Then moved back. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so that's a lot of... So, a lot of in the U.S. You were yes. in the U.S. for a while. Yes, yeah. So, uh, I, my background is in software and mathematics. I work for a small startup in uh, Los Angeles and then came back home because gotcha. this is where I'm needed. This is where you're needed, yeah. yeah. So you felt a call to come back to Tanzania rather than, because you, I'm sure you could have worked in the U.S. if you wanted to. Yep. But yeah, I just love it here so much and uh, I miss my mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good reason, yeah. for sure, for sure. Are you, um, what's, uh, like, what, what's, what's a day in the life of you like? You, what's, what does a day look like for you? Typical day. Oh man, recently they change around a lot. Um, so I wake up very early at like four in the morning. I start working until like 8 a.m. Um, just working on Dr. Elsa and Mary. So Mary is a new AI project we're trying to push um, across East Africa. But yeah, so uh, most of my time is spent between hospitals, between meetings and talking to uh, regulators and policy makers. Wow, okay, so a lot of people don't think of that when they think of AI yeah. development, but that's such a crucial aspect, especially for your use case, yeah. right? That's the hardest part, actually. That's the hardest part. The technology is super simple compared to talking to uh, people in the government and just pushing for new policies to be implemented here. Can you talk a bit about the tools you're using, the technologies? Is yeah. it like TensorFlow? Is it uh, PyTorch? Is it just basic, I mean, raw yeah. NumPy? Or is ah, it yeah. deep learning? I, Whatever you can say. Yeah. I don't want you to have to give away everything. but. No, I'm, I'm glad to share. It's been an adventure, actually. We started off with our neural networks. Um, in the early days, we had, uh, we had lots of different models going, and one of them was neural networks. Uh, we, had, we didn't have much data, but surprisingly, the neural networks still outperformed the other models that we had. Hmm. But currently, we have settled down on probabilistic graphical models. Wow, okay. Yeah. It makes it really easy to recommend the next, uh, recommend the next, next question, except, and um, just like think beyond the scope of the parameters that uh, you've trained on. They are the ones that work best for us because at the end of the day, we need to be able to explain why we think malaria and not dengue, right? Mm -hmm. And the best way to express that is through probabilities. Yes. Right? And um, yeah, and uh, just to touch on, on the stack that we're using, so we have different services on our back end. We have the pediatric service, we have the uh, cervical cancer service, we have the NCD service, etc., etc. And each one of these, uh, there's a triage model that determines which specialist algorithm you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so different parts use different algorithms. For the most part, we're using PGMs, probabilistic graphical models. Mm -hmm. But for things like cervical cancer or things where we only had one type of data, we're using different types of uh, models, like isolation, isolation forests and 
one class support vector machines. Wow, okay, so you're trying out different models and seeing the results and comparing them. Yes, yes, gotcha. and we have different models for different um, age groups, genders, etc. Cetera, et cetera. What do you believe the future of AI looks like in Tanzania? Do, is there a lot of interest in it? or? Yes, there's lots of interest in it, and I'm very biased with this answer, so that's just a little disclaimer there. Yeah. But um, I'm glad a lot of people aren't considering uh, Tanzania and a lot of the African countries. It gives us a chance to, um, to really put our heads down and get to work. And I think this is where I actually honestly believe this is a technology that will either um, widen the gap between those who have and those who don't, or close the gap, or we can go a different direction. Mm -hmm. And I'm really investing in this technology even locally. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the ecosystem here is thriving. It is really, really exciting now. After meeting Ali, I had the chance to meet his co-founder, Megan Allen. Originally from the United States, Megan had been living in Tanzania for several years, which definitely made for an interesting conversation. So, Megan, tell me a bit about yourself. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Arizona, originally, okay. from the United States. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And did you spend, did you spend a lot of time there or did you like immediately come to Tanzania? Yeah. Um, no, so I was born and raised in Arizona. Um, I actually went to ASU, so go Devils. Okay. And then I, let's see, I started traveling when I was 19. I lived in India for a while doing work in healthcare and wow. education, which is what I do a lot of now. And then I moved to Tanzania in 2015. You moved to Tanzania? Yeah. Okay, so you live here? Yes. <laughs> wow. It's not, you're not just visiting. No. <laughs> and you've been here then for four years? Yep. Yep. That's Incredible. Yeah. And, wow. You don't see a lot of Americans living abroad in East Africa. Yeah. Um, generally. That's amazing. So um, why Tanzania? Why did you choose Tanzania? Yeah. So I actually came here originally for two reasons. The first one was I became the director of a nonprofit organization that does health education. Um, so I moved here to take over that position and really grow the organization here. And then I was also finishing my master's degree and my research is in HIV and I wanted to do my research in Northern Tanzania. So gotcha. those were the main reasons why I was originally here. Yeah. Um, and then I just stayed because I love it so much. How did you come to Dr. Elsa? Yeah, so I met Ali um, not long after I moved here and he was working on AI and technology and we were both interested in health. And so it was just like a perfect match. Um, and we started building Dr. Elsa right after that. Um, he had already actually had the idea to build something in healthcare to figure out how we could utilize AI to make a difference for people um, around their health. And that's something I was interested in. So we dove in and we've been working on it since. We eventually said our goodbyes to the Dr. Elsa team and took off to the Serengeti Desert to interview park rangers using drones to detect poachers at night in order to save the lives of animals. The idea is that these drones can cover large areas very fast and use computer vision technology to automatically detect the presence of humans in the Serengeti. Things seem to be going well. We did meet some rangers, but in the middle of the trip, something totally unexpected happened. So in the middle of the Serengeti desert, I ended up experiencing a panic attack. It was this gripping, terrible feeling. It was in my throat. I felt like I was gonna die and I had to leave. So we didn't end up getting the footage that we wanted from Dar es Salaam, the next city that we were going to visit. Um, but I still wanna show you uh, the developer that's working there named Yesaya on, a, and he's, he's working on a chat box. I'm gonna show you what he's working on after this. But before I do that, I wanna just stop for a second and acknowledge the fact that I've learned a lot these past few weeks. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes, uh, some of them very public. For example, the research paper that I copied and pasted parts from from other people without properly attributing. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I'm sorry. Uh, I definitely could have done better. And uh, I'm going to definitely, I'm striving to learn from that mistake and every mistake that I've made so far. And just re remind myself that I'm an inspirer. I, I think I, in general, <clears throat> from reading lots and lots of positive feedback on YouTube, like Siraj is an AI God, and just like really internalizing that, I started to overstep my bounds. You know, I'm not a researcher, I'm a YouTuber, and I just overstep my bounds. And you know, I think in general, my ego just started to grow a little too big, and I thought, oh, I can do everything. I can run a YouTube channel, I can do this and that, and it's just not true. Um, so definitely a huge learning experience for me, 
I had to definitely just, you know, um, just really think about what my decisions were and what my decisions are going to be in the future. You know, how, how what are my next steps here? You know, and I think the general consensus that I've come to myself is that I want to continue to inspire people and I want to be true to myself and I don't want to let myself or you down or anybody down and I just want to continue to create more experts in the world by inspiring people however I can through YouTube videos. So all that being said, uh, it's been a huge learning experience and now I would like to show you uh, the story of Ishan Ghazi, the sexual health chatbot run by an incredible person named Yesaya and his team in Dar es Salaam. Here we go. Yesaya Atuman, a developer living in Dar es Salaam, is the founder of eShangazi, a chatbot that provides free sexual and reproductive health education to young girls. Because there is a stigma around discussing sexual health topics in that region, many girls feel more comfortable asking their questions to a chatbot than to a human out of fear of judgment. Early signs show that it's already decreasing unplanned pregnancies in the region, and Yesaya's team is hard at work improving it every day. I believe that the future of healthcare lies in the hands of ordinary people who are motivated to do extraordinary things. People like Ali and Megan and Yesaya. They saw problems in their community and learned the necessary software skills to be able to provide solutions for people. And guess what? You can too. The algorithms, data sets, and educational resources you need are all freely available on the internet. You just have to get started learning. I've got links for you in the video description.